Last week in Michigan politics, the race for the White House enters its final days. As 13 on your side has learned, one of the major candidates is set to hold their final rally right here in Grand Rapids. Plus, election officials have continued to signal our process is secure. But the news of a foreign national voting on the election has sparked new concerns. Why it's believed their vote may count anyway. I'm Josh Albertus and this is your 13 on your side rundown. The election is now just two days away and 13 on your side has now confirmed ABC News reporting from this week that Donald Trump will once again hold his final rally in Grand Rapids. We know that uh, Grand Rapids has been a uh, popular symbolic place uh, for uh, Donald Trump uh, to uh, end his campaigns, uh, and so it's no surprise that uh, he'll be back. At least that's reportedly the plan for former President Donald Trump as the race for the White House enters its final days. According to ABC News, sources telling the network Trump is scheduled to hold his final campaign rally here in Grand Rapids. With ancestral Republican roots, recent Democratic trends, and a population of hundreds of thousands, Kent County, one expert said, is a prime camping battleground to try to win back some of the voters uh, that uh, Donald Trump has lost, but traditionally vote Republican, uh, and to try to gain uh, some of the new conservative-leaning voters, uh, it makes sense to, to make one last appearance. It's an area that could be booming with activity well after Election Day, depending on the outcome. Some fear a similar situation to what happened in 2020, when Republican-leaning Election Day totals were largely reported first, and the later reporting of Democratic-leaning absentee numbers slowly phased out Trump's advantage. Referred to as a red mirage by many, it's a concept one local clerk explained at a town hall weeks ago on election security. We had the first set of results that reported in are almost always um, precinct results because the workflow in that process is, just, is quicker. And when you're in a voting precinct, the voters casting their ballot, there's not as much steps as an absentee ballot. But this year could be different, with clerks now allowed to pre-process absentee ballots, and as hundreds of thousands have already cast their ballot in person in Michigan's first mandatory statewide early voting period. With many having already cast their ballot, it could lessen the impact of a late season rally. But Grossman says with this close of an election, any shift could make all the difference. It's late, but people are still making their decisions. I mean, the um, early voters are generally people who are have are clear about their decision. So there's still people both making the whether to vote decision and the who to vote for decision. And both presidential campaigns have continued to push for votes in Michigan this past week. Trump's running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, held his own rally in Holland Tuesday afternoon. A day of high winds in West Michigan on Tuesday, representing months of whirlwind campaigning in this critical swing region. Near Holland, Republican vice presidential nominee and Ohio Senator J.D. Vance making what will likely be one of, if not the last, direct pitch to West Michigan voters. Vance touching heavily on the issues that have seemed to most buoy his ticket's message among voters in the polls, things like the economy and immigration. Kamala Harris is more of the same, more of the broken border policies, more of the unaffordable groceries and unaffordable housing, more of the broken leadership, and I think that we ought to say to Kamala Harris, you are fired. His visit coming as Michigan has already begun its first mandated statewide early in-person voting period for a general election. But where skepticism existed among many in the GOP just four years ago over early voting methods like mail-in voting and drop box absentee voting, many now encouraging voters to take up the option that's best for them. As President Trump has said, it is what it is. And you can't have one campaign trying to take advantage of every opportunity to vote, that being the Kamala Harris campaign. If that's going to happen, then the, the President Trump campaign has got to take advantage of every opportunity to vote, too. Democrats responding to the visit. One local state lawmaker telling 13 on your side she believes the developing arguments of the GOP have fallen flat. At first, they were talking about, um, you know, Kamala Harris potentially not having done what she should have done on the border, which, of course, is because 
Donald Trump killed the bipartisan border bill, which would have provided, you know, the resources that we we desperately need um, to start getting us on the right track with immigration. The visit also comes as the campaign has faced scrutiny following former President Donald Trump's rally in New York on Sunday, where one speaker seemed to compare Puerto Rico to, quote, a floating island of garbage, among other comments many have labeled as overtly racist. While many Democrats believe this to have been the theme of the Trump campaign, Vance saying that night was about something different. We had you know, great singers, we had American business tycoons, and of course we had our favorite president. And it just felt like a lot of people were thrilled to be there to celebrate are the United States of America, our history, and most importantly, what our future could hold if we fix the broken leadership. With all that's been seen on the trail, Glanville saying there's a clear contrast. And in his 11th hour rally, Vance also portraying the race as a clear choice, but from a very different angle. We have got two choices in this country. We have got the pathway of higher grocery prices, higher housing prices, a wide open southern border, and then we've got the Donald J. Trump pathway of peace, prosperity, and an affordable American dream. In seven days, let's choose the pathway of peace and prosperity. Josh Albertus, 13, on your side. And just one day after Vance was in West Michigan, Democrats called on a former president to rally voters to the polls. We were in Muskegon Heights Wednesday as Bill Clinton hit the podium, stumping for the Democratic ticket. On the banks of mighty Lake Michigan, the sometimes fearsome waves couldn't possibly match the ferocity of the race for the White House, where Muskegon County may have a reputation as having voted for a Democrat for president for every election in the last 20 years. That reputation now hangs by a thread. Muskegon is so important. Right. Right. That's why everybody comes here. Where margins of victory in the presidential election were once in the thousands of votes, Muskegon has quickly transformed into its own battleground. In 2020, President Joe Biden carried the county by just 510 votes out of over 90,000 that were cast. Now to shore up support on the lakeshore. Democrats calling in one of their party's biggest names. Former President Bill Clinton speaking in Muskegon Heights Wednesday morning. Go out there and win this election. I'm telling you, you will be proud of yourself for the rest of your days if we win this election and Michigan leads the way. Clinton trying to appeal to voters on a number of fronts, from human rights to an appeal to common decency, and what he feels would be a concerning ultimate requirement of loyalty in a second administration of former President Donald Trump. We need other people who have different life experiences, who have different, you know, Areas of knowledge, we need that. But some in the GOP aren't buying it. Calling in the big dogs, the old guard, uh, Bill Clinton to come come stump for her. It, it's definitely clear that, uh, that that the Harris campaign believes that they have a problem here in Michigan, and they'd be right. State Representative Brian Posthumus said he agrees that toning down in rhetoric and a renewed emphasis on civility are a must. But the problem for the Harris campaign, he feels, comes down to universal tabletop issues. Cost of food, cost groceries, energy bills, housing bills, energy, everything. Uh, the, the costs are skyrocketing and that's causing a major problem for them here in Michigan. And Vice President Kamala Harris is also set to make a stop in Michigan and other battleground states just before Election Day. The one campaign for Michigan, an organizing arm of the Democratic Party here in Michigan, had on their website that she will be in East Lansing later this afternoon. Her schedule also included visits to Wisconsin on Friday, then Georgia and North Carolina for rallies in Atlanta and Charlotte on Saturday. A Chinese student at the University of Michigan is facing felony charges accused of not only registering to vote, but casting a ballot in the presidential election despite not being a U.S. citizen. Brett Cast from our Detroit affiliate explains how the student was able to register in the first place, why the vote will likely count, and how other students are reacting. It's hard to walk around a college campus and not realize it's election season. And at the University of Michigan, early voting is already underway. Everybody here, they shove in your face like, oh, are you voting? Are you voting? Vote early. Like, everybody needs to vote. And, like, they don't even ask if you're American, and we have a lot of international students. 
But Michigan junior Max Friedman was not happy to learn a fellow student from China who is not a U.S. citizen was able to not only register to vote, but also cast a ballot on campus. So I'm not surprised that it happened, but I'm surprised that like it actually counted and they actually got credit for voting. According to the Secretary of State's office, the 19-year-old student went to the campus early voting site Sunday, registered to vote using his UMID card, showed documents proving residency in Ann Arbor, and signed a document identifying as a U.S. citizen. Since the ballot was filled out and put into the tabulator, there's no way to take it back, and it will count this election. I was very surprised. I didn't expect it to be possible because when I voted, it required a lot of um, proof. UM freshman Benjamin Zhang spent a decade in China but was born in the U.S. However, he has friends who aren't citizens like Sing Shen Li, also from China, who said he's not surprised the student who voted is facing a felony charge. I kind of expect that because I know how voting is the right as a citizen and it's a big deal, so any foreigner don't want to don't mess with it. The issue was discovered after the student contacted the Ann Arbor clerk's office and asked to get the ballot back. The clerk then reported it to police. This is the one time it was documented. How many other times is this happening that we don't really know about? In a statement, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson said, quote, non-citizen voting is an extremely isolated and rare event. Investigations in multiple states and nationwide have found no evidence of large numbers of non-citizens registering to vote. Even less common is a non-citizen actually casting a ballot. When it does happen, we take it extremely seriously. And that was Brett Cast reporting. The penalty for voting as a non-citizen could include jail time, fines, and even deportation. The Attorney General also announced they've begun an independent parallel investigation. And new this election, many Michigan jurisdictions began pre-processing absentee ballots ahead of Election Day. Coming up, we go inside one of those pre-processing centers and show you how they work. New this election, we are getting a first look at the pre-processing of absentee ballots. Earlier this week, election workers in Grand Rapids were able to get the process started. And 13 on your side's Lauren Baker takes us inside one of those early processing locations. In a busy gym, the sound of shuffling papers and small talk fill the room. As Election Day workers begin counting votes for this year's election. We're going to have a good amount of the absentee ballots already tabulated, which takes a lot of pressure off. City of Grand Rapids Clerk Joel Hondorp says that's all thanks to the election workers pre-processing absentee ballots. It's a new opportunity for jurisdictions with a population over 5,000 to verify and tabulate absentee ballots sent in before Election Day. Looking back to 2020 when we couldn't start until basically Election Day morning, we didn't get done with all of our ballots until Wednesday afternoon. So this time gives us time like during a regular work day, everybody can go home, get a good night's sleep, come back tomorrow fresh, ready to do the next batches. You're looking at some of these batches going through the process of being verified, which includes workers checking for signatures and matching numbers. They're going through and making sure that the ballot, in, which is in a secrecy sleeve, matches the ballot number on the envelope. And then um, they'll remove that stub, remove the ballot from the secrecy sleeve after that. And then we bring it over to a tabulator where we're, we're actually tabulating them. You can also see that certified poll watchers are able to watch this process sooner and not have to wait until election night. And because this process started earlier and early voting has begun as well, Hondorp says he hopes this means things will run smoothly on election day. We're doing the absentee counting. We got all election training done. Um, we, got everything, we got everything ready to go. And early voting continues across the state. Earlier this week, former Governor John Engler joined the Kent County Clerk at an early voting site to talk about election security. Engler, along with Kent County Clerk Lisa Posthumous Lyons and Grand Rapids City Clerk Joel Hondorf, toured the early voting site at DeVos Place downtown. The city has four early voting locations. Several security measures are in place, including early testing of ballot tabulators, showing a picture ID before receiving a ballot or by signing an affidavit confirming your identity. Then after the election, the ballots are canvassed to make sure everyone was counted accurately. Bottom line, Angler says no matter who wins, the public should have confidence in the process. You know, you can have a local race where it's one or two votes. Well, now there's a way to go in and everybody can be certain that the reported result is the result. And, and that's important. And if there was a problem, it's going to be found and it'll be corrected. 
The Kane County clerk also wanted to remind voters that there is a paper ballot for every vote cast, and if there is ever a question, that ballots can't be audited. There are no statewide proposals on ballots this election, but you might still find some local ones. Coming up, we look at a proposal that will have voters in Muskegon Heights considering the city's marijuana industry. Ballot box fires out west have left some Michigan voters concerned what if it happens here? Two absentee voting drop boxes were set on fire in Oregon and Washington State last Monday. Local officials say while this has not happened in Michigan, they are prepared if it does happen. We're monitoring everything that happens around the country, um, and so so we're so we'll make sure that we're that they're where I, I know GRPD is aware where all of our drop boxes are, so they can as they're driving by they, they they're aware where they are um, just to be cognizant. We do um, have cameras on all but one of them. Hondorp says if someone did set fire to a ballot box, voters would be notified if their ballot was impacted. And if you want to make sure that your ballot absentee ballot is received, you can track it through the state's election website. Go to Michigan.gov slash vote and click on the absentee ballot tab. And then the tab did my ballot arrive. Enter your information to see updates. Those updates start when your application is submitted to your clerk. You can see when your ballot was mailed, received, and whether it was accepted or rejected. If rejected, you'll get the reason and instructions to fix it. Voters in Muskegon Heights are deciding whether to change the rules affecting the city's marijuana industry. Right now, the number of recreational and medical marijuana related business licenses is capped. The proposal would remove that cap and reduce licensing fees for business owners. If passed, the city will no longer limit the number of marijuana businesses allowed in Muskegon Heights. And 13 is on your side with everything you need to know this election season, including information on the deadline for early voting and how to find your polling location. You can vote early in person through when the early po voting polls close today. You have to be registered to vote and cannot register to vote at an early voting location. You can register to vote at your clerk's office until the polls close on election day. Absentee ballots need to be returned before 8 o'clock on election night. And at this point, you should return your absentee ballot to a drop box, an early voting location, your clerk's office, or your polling place. On Tuesday, November 5th, polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. We have a link to find your polling location and to preview of your ballot in our voting guide at 13onyourside.com slash elections. Today is the last day to early vote in person before Election Day. Coming up, we talked with local clerks earlier this week about what to expect when you get to the polls. Early in-person voting in Michigan continues through the end of the day today. The process had gone smoothly for most through the first week, but some were reporting the wait to cast their ballot at a polling location in Ottawa County was close to an hour earlier this week. 13 on your side's Micah Cho has the story. Each of our jurisdictions has one early voting site, with the exception of Grand Rapids, they have uh, four. Because any resident can vote at any of the four sites, um, so that's definitely a great option. The county clerks for Kent and Ottawa say they've had a busy week of early voting. Um, we estimate that it will be uh, $1.5 million to uh, implement early voting. That's all year long, so each of our three elections. Early voting ends Sunday, and depending on where you live, people still wanting to cast their votes before Election Day might have to wait in line. That was not the case at DeVos Place in Grand Rapids. Probably about at the most 10, 15 minutes. I like it because I mean, you get to uh, vote when you want to, you know, and you put it, uh, you can situate it around your schedule. It was very short. I, I had an absentee ballot, which they told me I could just fill out and you know use my own ballot. 
So I filled it out. And the longest part was just waiting in the little line to get checked in. Ottawa County has four voting locations at the site in Georgetown Township. Wait times have gotten close to an hour, however. Uh, it was about, I'd say, like 45 minutes, and it was super nice in there. I mean, it was my, or both of our first times voting, so yeah, yeah it was an overall good experience. Um, I felt like the line was moving actually faster than what it appeared to, so it was actually a really nice experience, even though we did have to wait. Ottawa County Clerk Justin Roebuck says throughout their four early voting locations, they're doing their best to make the wait as short as possible. We try to do everything that we can to mitigate that and make uh, make sure that the, the, the traffic is flowing really well. Um, and so we brought on additional staff. We brought on additional check-in stations for voters to process uh, their information and make sure that they get the, the ballot that they need. And so that has really uh, helped us quite a bit. And that's the rundown for your week in Michigan politics. Be sure to keep up with all the top political stories of the day, both on air and online at 13onyourside.com. We'll see you next week.